Okay, guys, so today, Last Epoch is what's on the menu, and we play it from the beginning to a pretty decent spot, starting off with right before the brand new cycle comes out, and then leading on to the day of. And in this video, I want to give you guys a little bit of a review, or even a first impression. I'm just going to give you guys my take, because I ended up actually enjoying the game. Uh, so we're going to start from the top. I want to go over a little bit about what Last Epoch even is. Uh, it's kind of like Diablo 4, or even Path of Exile, an ARPG, where you pick a class, adventure through a story, and ultimately you get to a late game that will boil down to you trying to come up with a build that is better, more efficient, or more effective than other builds, and then climbing a leaderboard to try to be the very best. And eventually you'll get to a point where you think to yourself, maybe I want to make an alt, maybe I can't progress with the build that I chose, and I have to make a different one, a better one. And I think they're just trying to be a better version of Diablo 4. With my brief time playing this game so far, there are lots of things that remind me of Path of Exile and Diablo, but that's the point. It has been made as as far as I can see from the research I've done by developers who started this whole project with the idea of we are players first and damn do I respect that on a super deep level. So let's start from the top right? Uh, we are going to be making a brand new character but first of all there are five classes you can pick from. Character creation is not really a pro I would say of Last Epoch. You can't really do that much. Essentially when you pick a character you follow the story as that character and so what you see is literally what you you get. I mean it. There's no hair color, there's no body type, there's no gender even. There's nothing of that type. You start off with the Sentinel on the far left as an option that can actually end up going into some pretty cool subclasses like the Void Knight or the Forge Guard or even the Paladin. You then have the option to play a Rogue and you could also go into it and go with the Blade Dancer subspec or even the Marksman. And when the game comes out in one day, we will also have the Falconer unlocked, which as the name implies, will actually have you being a falconer, right? Like you summon falcons, they fight for you and stuff like that, which seems pretty cool. We've also got the mage. Uh, you always got to have a mage, right? And you can master as a sorcerer, or you could become a spellblade, or even a rune master, interestingly enough. And that's something that sounds cool enough that I might want to try that in the future. Now, we've also got the primalist. This is something you see even in Diablo 4 in their own way. This one actually lets you specialize as a beast master, or even a shaman, or even a druid. So we're combining all those, it's like kind of like Hunter and Shaman and Druid from WoW, I would assume, mixed into one class, which is interesting. And lastly, we have the Acolyte, which I really like that as a name, and they can become Necromancers or a Lich, or just like with the Falconer, as of tomorrow, I believe, a warlock and uh, so those are all the options but for my playthrough I went with a sentinel I want to stick close to what I know right now play the things I have the most fun with I enjoy melee I enjoy bulk I enjoy heavy armor I enjoy domination in close combat and I like all that type of stuff sentinel seemed like it was right up my alley as a result of that so I picked the sentinel named it McDoubles and we jumped into the world the next day okay guys a sentinel that is what I want to make it is last epochs day one of their 1.0 release so I have a very specific goal for this. I really enjoyed Diablo 4. My biggest mistake was choosing hardcore for my very first playthrough ever. That's my own mistake. That was actually stupid. You should probably play the game at least once before, you know, going into a hardcore mode, right? So anyway, we are going to be playing normal. On a Sentinel, I think I'm going to play Void Knight. I might even play Paladin. I played right before release came out. I made a character. I got to like 39. What I want to do as my goal for this video is I want to give you guys my first impressions throughout this video and a little bit of a review on what I think of Last Epoch. Is it worth your time? I mean, that's always what I'm looking for with games. Now, some things are actually different right off the bat from what I experienced on my very first run, literally two days ago as of this particular recording. So things have changed. The graphics look better. More people happen to be talking right off the bat in my chat. I know the population at some point was at like 150,000 people on day one. And I don't remember a dead guy right here with a quest. Now, I don't want to bore you guys with every detail of every aspect of the most mundane aspect aspects of this game. I know there are beginner's guides out there for people who want to learn. What I would like to do, as I said, is genuinely progress through this. I want to complete the game. I want to get to the end game, like I told you, and I want to actually come up with a build that's fun and strong and good, and I want to share it with you guys. So if you're looking for like a quick summary of what's going on, this is an action RPG. It's just like Diablo or Path of Exile. You are a character, you progress throughout the world. You have abilities, you create builds with those abilities, you augment,
content in a variety of different ways, the uh, different abilities that you choose. Here are some examples of what the page will look like and the abilities that we will dive into. And at the very beginning of it all, you choose a class. I chose the Sentinel. There is zero character customization. Who you see is who everybody is when they are a Sentinel. And there are a variety of other classes as well. But when you get into the classes, you can specialize into something even deeper. As I mentioned, you guys... I'm thinking about being a Void Knight or maybe even a Paladin. But yes, we essentially have a really cool kind of mashup between an old school game you might remember called Chrono Trigger. Then we have the Path of Exile Diablo kind of mashup mixed with that. And I don't know, I really get a lot of old school vibes from this game in general. So I think it's going to be a cool playthrough. And yeah, without further ado, let's pick up this little messenger's letter and let's find the Keeper's Camp where everything's going to start. Now, I start off with one ability if you don't count my right click. So I do move with left click, right? I attack basically with my right click, which gets upgraded based on your class at some point. But I have another ability I start off with as well called Vengeance. So essentially I can use Vengeance with Q, and if the target attacks me within two seconds of me using Vengeance, they will take additional damage because I will repost that attack. So, you know, it's not intensely exciting to be honest with you, but I do already know that what I get at level two is going to be pretty freaking sick. And I do plan to build around that to the degree that that's possible. As it is what I did before the cycle even came out. So here we go. We have Warpath right here. Look at this. So you hold down W and you Whirlwind. You Blade Storm if you play WoW, right? So, I mean, it's pretty cool. Now, when I play this on my own, as you can see, I would just Warpath through everything. Absolutely dominated with this. All the way up to 40 before, you know, the cycle came out. Lots of things have changed. Big patch notes and stuff like that. This bear is particularly difficult for some reason right off the bat. Spamming the Vengeance right now, I guess. Mine as well. But yeah, I really do think the goal will be to spin to win. So for example, we'll do a little bit of this. And as you can see, that's already dramatically more fun than spamming my Q. So the map is already looking a lot better, by the way. Uh, well, right off the bat, another thing I want to bring up is that this is going to be, as I said, a Chrono Trigger analog in some ways. Because in Chrono Trigger, you would actually go through different time periods of the same world and experience it in different ways. This is the only game I've seen in a very long time, albeit I haven't really been looking for it. But still, the only game I've seen in a very long time that actually does what Chrono Trigger does in this regard. We start off in the Divine Era, as you can see negative 12 BE. But there's also the Ancient Era, where there were far fewer things on the map going on, and dinosaurs. The Imperial Era, where they started to get a little bit more technologically advanced, and the world changes as you can see. The Ruined Era, where everything goes to shit, and then the End of Time itself, which, uh, yeah. I haven't really done too much here, but it's a pretty cool concept. So the main god of this world, I'll just say, is named Etera, and there are multiple, like, I guess you could say demigods in this world as well. It looks to me like the main point of this game is what you would expect it to be in the case that we fight and kill, you know, pretty generically evil guys. There's always some bad people doing some bad stuff. Now, we start off this particular part of the story, though, fighting something a little more unique, I guess, which is like a bird people called the Osprey. Now, it's not the phoenix you're seeing right now, but we will encounter them later on. But the Osprex, as you can see, it says fight through the Osprex forces. That is what I have to do. So literal bird people, they're fighting under the god or the demigod maybe called Raya. And oh, I don't want to die. Uh, but these guys are basically just being evil. Like, they're just being baddies, right? But you know, it, it's kind of like everything was good until the Fire Nation attacked. Like, that's what I got from the lore. Like, the Ospreys are basically the Fire Nation right now. And they're just messing up a what would have been a peaceful world. Now, I just got another ability called Hammer Throw. And I never really got too into this one when I tried this class before. It's literally what you would expect it to be. You, uh, yeah, you throw a hammer. Now, this Grail guy, he's just the champion of Herot. I think that's how you say that. Which is uh, another one of these demigod types. So, this is one of the guys that's obviously fighting against the bird people who are just going gung-ho on everybody in the whole world right now. So, you're a pretty generic hero from what I can see in this game. But if I'm honest with you, while I do actually think from what I've experienced so far that the story is good, um, I'm actually more actually inclined to want to play this game for the gameplay more than anything else. I really like ARPGs. I think they're fun, especially when they're done right. And yeah, from what I know about the team that made this game, they're very dedicated. They actually care about what their players think, not just them thinking they're better than everybody else. That really vibed with me, I won't lie to you. I respect it. But if you've played anything like Diablo or Path of Exile, you know exactly what's about to go down. Alright, I'm gonna defeat the Forge Soldier, and this is gonna be a long, long fight. Let's just spin to win to the best degree that we can. You can see, like, I'm already dying. And I do find that really cool. Now, I, I don't recall this being a thing later on. I feel like at a certain point, I start just dominating. But I do find it cool that they aren't afraid to let you die early on if you just don't want to care about anything or you play recklessly. 
I respect it. So we get lunge. Lunge is like a charge from WoW, uh, which is pretty nice. I do remember using this ability quite a lot. I'm going to throw the hammers. Why not? Let's bring down the hammer. Maybe I do play freaking hammer throw spec, but it literally just looks like a meme to me. Not going to lie to you guys. Okay, so it's time to pick my skill. I'm level five. I just got Rive, which is my auto attack replacer for now. And uh, I, you know what? I memed on hammer throw so much already in this video that I actually started to use it as a result of that. And then it grew on me. And I think I want my very first skill spec to be hammer throw. I just want to try. What if hammer throw is sleeper? What if it's really good? Let's try it. So the way this works, I can drag it up here. Now, once again, if you don't know, based on what I showed you earlier, the throwing hammer is literally what you see. You throw it, it boomerangs back to you, and uh, it is based on strength, dexterity, throwing attack, and physical, as you can see by the scaling tags. So when I acquire gear or through talents, passives, what have you, that give me those types of stats or upgrades, I know it affects my hammer throw directly. As you can see up here on the top left, I am level one with hammer throw now, and as I gain XP, and progress in the world, I will be able to level it, get more points, and progress them in the tree. It is linear in the regard that, you know, you have lines that go from one passive to the next, to the next, to the next, and so we have to see where we want to start. We could start off with winged hammers for a faster travel time. So honestly, to me, the coolest sounding one is force of impact. More damage sounds good, more stun sounds good. So we're going to start there, and it chains off into four different options for the future, and we'll go from there. And based on this, if we end up enjoying this, because we could respec if it sucks, we get jab in later too which is cool but we might not even go pally or void knight based on this we might go with the other spec that i have not played which is forge guard and it looks really unique too i don't know but that's what's so cool okay we're level eight right now that means i get another skill spec i will say the hammer throw is going really well you can see on the screen right now you just have these awesome moments where you're just chunking the hammers and people are dying quick it's not what i would have expected from a sentinel because it's a melee class, theoretically, right? But I really, really like it. But now I have to pick something else. Something that's actually going to go well with hammer throw. And quite frankly, there is nothing as far as I can see. I think what I might do is just do rebuke. So rebuke is a new ability I got that says hold the ability key, just like Warpath. And for the next two seconds, I take 80% less damage. And then at the end of that, I do damage that is also increased based on how many hits I took while channeling. I realized in my first playthrough before all of this new stuff came out with the new cycle that rebuke was really good at just cheesing mechanics. You know, somebody's going to do a crazy attack and like this other guy has to actually dodge it. I can just click rebuke. It doesn't matter. Passive progression's been been exactly what you would expect. We're five points in Juggernaut, and now I'm going to go into Relentless. Three points in that so far. It's 5% more damage per. Now, you can see the way this works is that you have different tiers you can get into. The tiers unlock once you acquire a certain amount of points in the previous tier, but then you actually have that dictated by this bar down here at the bottom. With that being said, not only do you unlock new passives as you progress the bar, but you also unlock new abilities, both for your base class and also for the sub-spec that you pick later on. So there's like literally three forms of progression I'm seeing right off the bat between Sentinel and then whatever I pick here and then also uh, whatever I pick over here. So I'm literally at a point right now with this build where I just hold down right click which I've bound now to my hammer throw rather than my rive and uh, yeah, it just does all the work for me. Okay, well, that's badass. Jesus Christ, that's my first like really sick unique weapon that I've got. Harthanon's Vow, it gives melee physical damage, which I guess is not as good for hammer throw, but seven strength and a bunch of companion stuff, which isn't good for me. So I haven't gone over this too much, but essentially you do get these shards and you're gonna be able to use the shards with this menu to forge things later on, which essentially just make your items better. I haven't dived into it too deeply yet. So for now, what you can do is click on transfer materials and just send everything to like its own special inventory which is really nice we are level 14 right now my friends i'm going to go into it looks like the fourth tier now you regain health and mana when you use stuff i really don't use 25 percent chance to gain health when i block which i'm not using a shield and retribution synergy which no one likes that i think i just keep going in the juggernaut for now i had like three unspent points apparently holy crap but i wanted to record because we have the ancient cavern right now so we've been in the ruined era for a bit serious chrono trigger vibes here everything's just like to shit and we're way in the future but this is the ancient time period when everything hadn't even happened yet the way i'm playing right now is exactly what you would expect i'll grab that that's gonna give me more crit but i round up all the mobs into a straight line to the best of my ability and then i just chunk hammers out okay so we had a mob back here and we just killed him perma stunned him real quick okay that's it for the ancient era it's just like your first foray into it but i love that you kind of like intertwine between all the different eras kind of like Almost randomly, you know? I will say up until this point, you know, trying this new talent with the hammer, I think this is iffy. Super iffy, dude. 
losing the pierce sucks so as i said to you guys i originally tried playing a pally before the cycle forge guard or void knight that's what i'm really leaning towards right now so i can either be a fallen knight who has taken part of the void inside themselves and uses it to devastate their foes even at the cost of their own life or a bulwark of strength and steel whose mastery of weapons and armor and the animation of molten metal dominates the battlefield that concept of an animation of molten metal is really cool now they all have passive bonuses and they also get a skill that they unlock as a result of picking it so i take less damage essentially as a forge guard and i have more armor so this seems more tanky though whereas the void knight straight up gives me 75 percent more melee void damage and my melee and throwing attacks and void spells have a 10 percent chance to be repeated by an echo which i really love that idea we're gonna go void knight dudes now this is the coolest part to me it says choosing a mastery class is final and cannot be undone or changed that is a cool concept and I'm cool with that. So there we go. We are now a Void Knight. So what this does is it unlocks the Void Knight Masteries. I can go back and forth. I could finish off Sentinel or I can put points in Void Knight. And of course, I got Erasing Strike, a melee attack that hits all enemies in a large area in front of me. Enemies killed by the hit are erased from existence and replaced with something called Void Rifts. And again, we're going to be echoing all of our attacks now, which is really cool. And at these different level intervals, I unlock new Void Knight specific abilities. And I don't know. I'm ready, dudes. Most of my abilities, I don't really get much use out of. I actually started using the smite, which is something that essentially it heals me if I'm close to the target in melee range. It's really weird. Like I have hammer throw and I'll get javelin, but you're not really feeling like a true range spec. I don't know if that's actually going to change. So we'll see how this actually ends up changing how we play the build. But for now, I think we'll go smite, erasing strike, rebuke, lunge, and hammer throw. And we'll call it a day with that. Okay. So I know I could keep going with the uh, hammer throw route, but now that I've unlocked void knight and also because it feels a bit underwhelming at low levels right now i'm assuming it could get better later on i think we're actually going to respect i really want to just go all in on this void knight concept and just do some stuff that is like even more fun let's just say now luckily only the axe thrower talent that i had was really you know counterintuitive everything else is exactly what i would take anyway for the most part i would say i can dual wield which is cool you can dual wield melee weapons by equipping a sword in your offhand i'm assuming just swords you take more damage while dual wielding i wonder what the point of being able to dual wield is if you take more damage now the interesting thing is uh, let's pretend none of this other stuff is really too cool for me i can go into void knight now i can get abyssal endurance just to be tankier i can get devouring blade you deal increased damage if you killed an enemy or i can get temporal corruption my spells and attacks do additional void damage and smite's base damage is converted to void interesting i was already using smite ignite chance from all sources is converted to slow chance for smite and effects from smite's tree that depend on ignite depend on slow instead smite can no longer provide healing wow so it doesn't heal me anymore but i'm assuming it does a lot more damage i mean do we even try that like i don't know i, I don't feel like i don't know doing increased damage if i killed an enemy is actually really good i actually think i'm just gonna go for devouring blade for now so we get 30 percent more damage right now for four seconds after killing somebody now this does lead me to this stuff i am going to respec this i'm going to despecialize rebuke despecialize uh the hammer throw this does put me down to only level three with whatever i pick and that's another reason i want to do this early while i you know still have some time while leveling to you know level this stuff up and uh you know not feel like i'm falling behind if that is an option i do think we're gonna start spinning to win and i want to use erasing strike as a main skill as well it's new for me and it seems really cool so let's just do that for now we're gonna go warpath i like the void looking stuff we're probably just gonna try that warpath does additional melee void damage okay I'm going to go for that. Going all in on the void, erasing strike. Erasing strike and void rifts it creates do damage in a larger area. That sounds good right off the bat. I want to do a lot of melee damage, just level super fast. So it works out. Like what I've got right off the bat feels strong. I'm going to go rive for my auto attack again, which should be fine for bosses for now. Yeah, and we're 20 points Senadol and 3 points Void Knight. I mean, I'm really excited. This is what I wanted the entire time, dude. Do let me know in the comment section if you've played this and you've seen throwing spec and throwing oh, hammers. Feet. Is it good? We could always switch back, you know? But for for now, I'm actually pretty happy going back to spin the win, right? This is genuinely fun. Let me show you guys exactly what I mean. Okay, so this is what I wanted the entire time. Like I said, I want to show it to you guys. So we've got the warpath. This is what erasure looks like, first of all. It's actually so good. Look at that. Like, it wiped them all out. It's a massive smack. I love a 2H weapon. I'm fully armored. And we know what warpath is. I do need more points to make it even better. But uh, I could, like, really just pull huge with it. And then just do like this. And my mana drains as I use it, but you can actually remove that with talents. 
Well, you can see how efficient that is too, right? Compared to just like throwing a hammer the whole time. Erasure, and then just run off. I have had the echo happen. Uh, and I think the next thing we specialize in is going to be the rive. Yeah, you see that little purple dude that popped up? That was my echo. And I can keep lunging to people. Like it actually flows really well. I like the idea that I might just actually have my endgame build at level 17, assuming it's, you know, functional and works at endgame. I have heard some good things about the endgame. Uh, I've heard no bad things, but I have heard some good things. So I am excited to get there and see what happens. And I really do already feel like Void Knight was such a good choice. Like, it's so freaking awesome already. And I feel so powerful already, too. We can Erasure, lunge at this guy. Well, actually, I'm out of mana. Lunge at that guy. Oh my god, that's a big boy. Okay, so what if I rebuke all the damage? And then just blow up. Oh. Oh. And Erasure. I like that Erasure is all... Oh, look at that. It freaking echoed. Uh, but I like that Erasure seems to be good single target and AoE. Everything is scaling properly. Uh, for the most part, Rebuke doesn't scale off strength, I guess. But everything has synergy. There's a big dude down there, too, by the way. But I actually think this game is really good. Like, I think it's worth playing, for sure. Like, my first impressions of this is that it's damn good. Um, it's really good. Now, I love ARPGs, and I'm biased. I play them all. I really do. I haven't played PoE in a while, but I did used to play it a lot when I was, uh, like, younger, like, five freaking years ago. And then, uh, Diablo 4, Diablo 3, Diablo 2 played all of those as well. Now, that's only two of them, and maybe if you're more hardcore, you don't think that's really good enough to call yourself a fan. But, uh, this is great. Like, this is actually better in many respects. Now, they don't have, like, the budget of Blizzard when it comes to, like, cutscenes and stuff, but the gameplay, it really does feel like it's been made by people who have played ARPGs and just wanted to do it better, you know? And I love the way the characters look. I love that I can actually see this guy so much better. Um, I, I don't know. I just like it a lot so far. Let me know what you think so far in the comment section below. I don't know if you're playing it or not, but, uh, for me, it's really fun. Definitely worth the time. Now, we are gonna end the video soon. I just wanted to give my first impressions on, uh, day one and just, like, see what you guys thing it does keep taking my helmet off uh the servers are laggy right now not the gameplay though the gameplay part is not laggy but loading screens are actually very slow i guess it's their way of bottlenecking people they just have so many people playing i i don't think they really figured that this many people would play which i guess is a good thing and I guess if people stick around, and I, I think they will because it's so fun, uh, they'll have to just straight up upgrade stuff to handle all the people playing. But yeah, I've been playing a lot of different things recently, just trying to try new stuff and actually enjoy life. Not gonna lie to you guys. There we go, level 18. And I think I want to keep playing this game for sure. It's just fun. Okay, check this out. Echo Knight. While spinning, I do increased void damage, and I have a chance every second to create an echo at my location that uses Warpath for two seconds. The chance is equal to twice my chance for skills to echo, which is so cool. I can only create a Warpath echo if I've been spinning for at least two seconds, which I always will. So I'm gonna go for that right off the bat, and I can level up my Erasing Strike as well. Oh, look at that! Erasing Strike and the spells it triggers do additional void damage. The bonus is doubled while wielding a 2H weapon. I use a 2H weapon. Let's go for that. Unlocks new pathways. We'll see where it leads, you know? Look at that! The dude! Freaking Warpath! I love the Warpath Echo. But yeah, guys, going Void Knight now, going with this route, way stronger than I was before, way happier at this point than I was before as well. Uh, the hammer throw, it was sus. I, I liked it for a little bit, but realizing I wasn't getting any real support for it at early levels made it kind of like meh. Especially when it's in the same class as one with Warpath, man. Like, Warpath is just so good. And now I've just got this, like, perfect setup. Now, one thing I will say before we end the video, uh, I hate to do it, but I'm gonna do it, is that if you want, if you do end up playing, you could do the refer a friend and just put in my name here by pressing H, going to social, and going to refer a friend and entering my name as the code. And I get a B pet, dude, if I get you guys to do that. Come on, man. Like, clearly, I can get three people to give me that B pet, bro. But yeah, guys, okay, we're gonna go ahead and get this ready. I'm gonna get to the city real quick so I can find a stopping point. And uh, that is going to be day one for me and my day one first impressions of Last Epoch. Honestly, a wonderful ARPG. Feels really good. Gameplay feels great. Love the options. Love the Void Knight class that I tried. Looks like the other options are cool as well. Um, I would say a solid, decent amount of depth. And we'll see as we get to endgame if that depth continues in the gameplay as much as it does with the actual builds and stuff like that. Okay, there we go. Level 19, we get Void Cleave. We might just use that, by the way, before we end the video. Oh my god, that gives me melee void damage. And it's just more damage overall.
Oh, okay. We're using a spear now. Hello? Requires a two-handed sword or axe. Oh, you can't use it with a pole arm. It can be echoed, but damn. Okay, not needed. Not even a problem. Okay, I also got another Void Knight ability real quick at level five. It returns me to the position I was at two seconds ago, reverting changes to my current health and mana. I might use that. We're gonna relax on it for now, though. Alright, guys. We are now permanently loading into the cultist camp. Hey, we'll just stop right here. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like and a subscribe. Uh, I really enjoyed this game, as I keep saying. I think that says something for me personally, as I've got a lot going on right now, but I'm going to take my time and I'm going to play this. Maybe you guys will as well. Uh, like I said, like and sub if you enjoyed. Major thanks to all the members on my channel. Love and appreciate you guys. We'll see all of you on the next one and make doubles out.